All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast, episode 293, Side B. Yesterday, uh, we'd hoped to have Andrew on the show with us to talk about, uh, what were we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about KISS, and uh, thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one. No, um, we, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky. I was able to see the next leg of KISS's End of the Road Tour in Buffalo, New York on Wednesday night. Today is Friday for anybody keeping tally. But unfortunately, due to some inclement weather and due to some other cool things that we'll talk about here in a moment, I wasn't able to make the show deadline. And it was funny, when I had sent you a message, I, I saw the Skype conversation come up like a minute later. I'm like, man, I was just... I was so busy during the day that I had forgotten to reach out. But uh, once I tell you what happened and all that good stuff, I think uh, it'll all be good. But uh, but yeah, so here we are. I'm back from Kiss Show number 39 in Buffalo, New York. And it was uh, it was an awesome, awesome, awesome time. So cue the music, Andrew's Night in Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, that's a Vegas review show now. Yeah, which Davis, uh, David Lee Roth did not do Ladies Night in Buffalo at the show, or any of the shows yet, which is a real shame because I'm a big fan of the Eat em and Smile album, which, you know, he, it was actually my first ever concert. So I've got a soft spot for David Lee. I'm a big fan of Yankee Rose, and he hasn't been doing that either. Well, that's a, kind of a tough one to sing these days. It looks like a lot of the stuff in his catalog on this tour is geared kind of to being a... It looks so good. Look at all the music. This is so good. It's happy to do a lot. You know? <laughs> it's happy to do a lot. But, uh, okay, well, the first thing that, that for anybody that's watching who follows me on social media knows I've been pimping out uh, these cool little buttons, which I... So this one is actually mine, but I don't have any more left, which is a great problem to have. So uh, The Greatest Show on Earth, the KISS fan film that is on Vimeo that you can stream at any time, completely free. And please, if you're going to watch it, make sure you own Kissology Volume 1 and Kiss Alive 2. I decided that uh, anytime I go to a KISS show or go to any little event, I'm just going to be giving you guys something. So how cool is that? This film took me nearly two years to complete, and uh, I just keep giving you stuff to hopefully promote the film and hopefully stuff that you guys are going to enjoy. So a lot of fans found me. A lot of fans were able to get a cool button. I left some buttons around the arena. I left some buttons around the parking lot, so I'm sure people picked those up too. I saw a couple of posts on Facebook. So uh, a huge thank you to anyone that streamed The Greatest Show on Earth or got one of these buttons or just, uh, you know, stopped me and said hello. So, uh, you know, really big thanks to anyone that did that. So uh, That's you can't very get cool. these. And, and if people got a flat tire from the ones that were left in the parking lot, they uh, pulled the, the car around and there was one of these sticking into their tires. Uh, Somebody else it, dropped it. It wasn't it, me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, I, I saw the guy drop it. it it wasn't it wasn't me so actually julian you gave me the idea to do this because i know when you saw a couple of the end of the road shows you had done a special kiss faq button uh on the dates that you actually the, saw the end of the road show so i think you did vancouver and new york right i did them for all the shows including the uh, couple hundred that i threw down the garbage chute because they had the wrong dates after they canceled <laughs> la and oakland in september so oh. that was a real bummer yeah uh, but it got to be such a pain in the ass to hand them out and get rid of them that uh i just stopped that idea but then again i was doing like 150 of the things so way too much effort i did 50 and i ordered them and designed them on a thursday night and they were in my mailbox on saturday morning so I couldn't be more happier with this service, and I, I'm sorry, but I forgot who I used. Um, and I, I will tell you, because this is a shout-out to Christine Button Queen, who originally told me where to get them, as obviously the Zilch and Podkiss and Kiss Room uh, podcasts have done these for years. Uh, it's purebuttons.com. Pure Buttons, that's right. You're right, Pure Buttons. Really good service, um, very good quality, and you know it's just fun. It's a it's a throwback thing to do pins. I'll yeah. probably do some for the next project, which is obviously the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast. Now I've finally gotten kind of my background image done, and uh, Look It's Rock and Roll. <laughs> but this is cool. So I think the next one I do, it may be, it might look a little more like the I Was There button from Kiss Alive 2. And that was also sold at the merch stand in 1979. It's going to look a little more like that. But th these are cool. So if you see me at a Kiss show, which, uh, listen, a lot of people spot me at Kiss shows. A lot of people say hello. A lot of people say how much they used to enjoy you know, the podcast that I've been on and that they enjoy the, the episodes I'm on with you. So a huge, huge shout out and thank you to everybody that does that. I really appreciate it. And I enjoy 
that um, you still want to listen to me talk about Kiss. Awesome. So, well, I'm always always happy to have you be a part of our podcast. <laughs> I, so. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. So uh, let's talk about some. Let's talk about some goodies first. So I kind of want to do this show. I, I don't want to do a normal show review. I don't want to talk about it is from beginning to end. I want to show you some cool stuff first because there was a lot of cool stuff that uh, that, that I got. So um, now this first thing I'm going to show you. This is a little bit of a throwback to the Japanese tour. Back in December, uh, I did show on my Facebook page and in the Kiss My Collectibles group that I got a cool Japanese tour book. But uh, there was something else that I was waiting on. And uh, my friend who was in Japan said he was also going to be at the Buffalo show. And he's like, listen, I, I, I don't want to ship this, but uh, don't worry, I got it for you. And uh, it's a set of these awesome Japanese Kiss plushies. These are so cool. Okay. And let's take them. Mark, you know, Mark, Mark Giacchini is having a seizure right now because you've just opened them so violently. No, because – but here's the thing. Like they're so cool. I'm keeping them in the box and I'm going to display them in the box. But they're just – this is just fun. That's all this is. These – these th this design of plushies is very, very big in Japan. So some of the designs look like a lot of you know anime characters that are in there. But it's definitely Kiss. It's definitely the end of the road. And uh, this was just cool. I saw these in, in the merch booth and I was like, oh, my God, I have to have these. And I was lucky enough to uh, to get a set. So um, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to give any any unneeded shots. But he knows who he is. And thank you so much for, for doing this for me and, and grabbing right. this for me. I just, really love it. Just him. hold those up in front of the camera a little slower this time. I want to be able to see each one of these guys. Obviously, Tommy, Gene. Gene looks great. Is it Paul? And then let's see Eric on the end there. Okay, go out a little bit so we can see him a little bit more. I mean, oh, Eric? Yeah, pull, yeah, there we go. Eric, that's awesome. Looks good. I like the green They are, uh, the they are all awesome. They are really, really all. And I don't really love a lot, a lot of boutique items like this or a lot of you know silly items like this. But this is awesome, and I'm really, really glad I was able to get a set and put Come it in my on, collection. I always, I always mock Kiss merch, and I love those. Those are awesome. I'm glad to see They're those. They're so cool. They're so yeah. cool. Thanks for sharing that. So cool. They're so cool. Okay, so the next thing... I was supposed to have a video done about this today, but you know, listen, life gets in the way, but I, I am working on it and I will get it. This is version five of the end of the road tour book. And uh, there are six total versions. There's a misprint version that mixed up the 77 and 79 pages. I don't consider that a variant. I consider that a misprint. And it, there were so few of them available. It would be very, very difficult to hunt one down, and a lot of people wouldn't even know what they're looking for. So for now, there is there is five versions. I mean, it even says V5 on the back of it, the way at the bottom. So, uh, But it's got a brand-new cover, and it has brand-new 2019 photos in here as well, too. And there's something else really cool in here. So what I've done for as long as I can remember is when – during Rock and Roll Night, I always open up my tour book, and I catch confetti in the pages of the tour book. So, and I'll keep that in there, and, and it's it's through a couple pages, and I just get some confetti, and I just keep on turning the page, and I catch it like that. I've always done that. So, uh, so yes, and and the other thing that's great about this tour book, and we'll talk more about this this later, but um, Gene actually th was thumbing through this tour book. And uh, I'll give you. I'll tell you later on when you can see that. So that's very, very cool. <clears throat> Next, doesn't he, doesn't he have his own? Well, he was just he was thumbing through it and he was just talking about it. So uh, anyway, anyway. Next, I was so lucky. So back in back in 20, uh, 2019 in Cleveland, I caught a Gene Simmons balloon during "Do You Love Me" at that point, and this time I caught two Paul Stanley balloons. In a nice bag of confetti. So this just this was my bag that my tour book was in, and that's this is all the confetti that ended up in the bag. Um, for those of you that don't follow me on social media or haven't seen my posts, I was lucky enough to be in the third row, literally right in front of Gene's mic, and uh, it, it was awesome. So I did catch quite a few picks. However, I was there with the guys and their families from Moneybag Soda, and uh, they have a lot of young kids. Like, and when I say young kids, like you know, between like eight and, and twelve. So every time I caught a pick, I would just give it to them because 
I wish someone would have done that to me when I was that age. And they're the future of, of Kiss fans. I remember I picked up one of the one of the Herco guitar picks and it had all blood on it and had Gene signature on it. It's one that I don't have in my collection. And uh, I saw one of the guy's daughters, I think she was nine, and she was like, hey, can I get a pick too? And I just, I, I overheard her say that and I go, yeah, this one's yours. So I caught a bunch of picks, but I gave everything to, to the kids that night because I wanted them to enjoy it um, as much as I was. So let's talk about the show. Uh, this is leg five of the end of the road tour. People are saying leg two, and it's it, it's leg five because leg one would be USA round one. Leg two is Europe round one. Leg three would have been um, USA round two. Leg four, leg four Japan. is Japan, and then leg five be, is this. Is this be Australia? And well, Japan, but there you go. I, yeah. Technically, they when you look back at a lot of their itineraries, they usually consider Japanese, Japan and Australia on the same leg of the tour because there's usually no break between the two. Yep. Usually, they go right from one to the other. So this is leg five, and for leg five, they added Tears Are Falling and Parasite. It was super, super cool to hear both those songs again. I think the last time I heard Tears Are Falling outside of a Kiss Cruise was in 2004 on the Rock the Nation tour. And I loved it when I heard it then. Uh, they played it at both nights when they shot the Rock Nation DVD back in July 2004. So I was there at that. So go and find yeah, it. That, that was uh, Virginia, wasn't it? And Nissan, Nissan Beach or something like that? And, it uh, was uh, Nissan, Nissan Pavilion, which was Bristol, Virginia, and then Virginia Beach. But uh, Paul Stanley would call Bristol, Virginia, Washington, D.C. So being at the Rock the Nation tour, they shot it in the nation's capital. So made total sense. Made total sense. Good marketing ploy by Kiss, as always. So it was very cool to hear those songs. It's cool to see Kiss after a little bit of a break because they seem to be more energized than they were when I saw them in the summer. I saw them in Cincinnati at one of the outdoor sheds. Um, but they seem to be more into it and having more fun now. And it was just cool to you know, see this show again. This show is awesome. Um, the Rockets at the beginning were back, so I saw the Rockets go and, and blow up in front of the curtain during Detroit Rock City, so that, that was awesome to see. And it's just, it's cool to be able to, to go to a KISS concert, and it's cool to be able to, you know, have that kind of connection. Prior to the show, Gene Simmons and Moneybag Soda, we set up a meet and greet with some executives for some stores that are either carrying or going to be purchasing Gene Simmons Moneybag Soda to distribute. So I got to hang out with Gene backstage a little bit, talk a little bit, and uh there was a Japanese film crew, NHK, that was following Gene around because they're apparently filming a Gene Simmons documentary that will be airing soon. So keep your eye out on that. So they were back there. We, uh, The Moneybag team created a brand new poster that was in Japanese as like a homage to you know the, the Japanese audience that are going to be seeing this. So there are cool Gene Simmons Moneybag uh, Japanese posters that are out there that I helped design. And Gene was very, very cool to sign mine. And I'll show you a picture of mine. Because this is on my uh, my door at my office, so see it right there. And Gene gave an awesome signature there. So I, I'm gonna send this photo to you. So if you want to drop it in, you can uh, you can drop it in. Uh, yeah, just, I, I loved how when you posted it on Facebook this morning, you know, people immediately called you out for what looked like sellotape holding it to the door. Well, it actually is. So the whole thing is a giant sticker. The entire thing is a giant sticker. So until I can get it framed, I don't want to adhere it to anything. So the whole thing is like it's it, it's like it's kind of like the out, it, it looks like almost like the outside of a bicycle. You know, it was very very shiny and very very like that. So you could stick whatever you want on it, and nothing's going to happen to it. So yes, it's held up there with tape right now. It's not a big deal. It's not going to ruin it. It's I, I didn't want to take off the backing and adhere to something permanently right now. So uh, but it's it's cool. It's cool. They're just jealous that they don't have one. Nice design. I mean, that's just, you know, that's really cool. Just there aren't going to be too many of those out there and around. So there's there only going to be three in print. There's only going to be nice. three in print. So one is at the money back facility. One is mine. And one went to our, our friends over at NHK. Excellent. So, so it was cool. So at the day after the show, uh, Gene decided to stay in Buffalo and do some press. He went to the Tops headquarters. He went to a local Tops market that had just been renovated and he was riding around the whole market. You know, some people have seen videos of it. He was running around the market in a, in a little go kart, uh, which was hilarious to see him zip up and down the the aisles of the of the, uh, of the store. People were didn't, freaking he, out. Didn't he have a news reporter in the basket at one point? He, he well, there were several people that went in and out of the baskets, and every time they go into the basket, we would pile money bag soda on top of them, and he would take them around the store with the money bag soda. It was he was in great spirits, and it was awesome. But the absolute icing on the cake 
is uh, for those of you that don't know, Moneybag Soda is made by a company called Johnny Ryan Soda, which is located in North Tonawanda, New York, which is basically Buffalo. And the guys that run it, the, the Johnny brothers, Paul and John, really great friends of mine, they um, they were like, well, hey, uh, you know, Gene needs a place to do a cool interview. Uh, why don't we just take him back to our house, our basement, which is a giant kiss room slash bar slash you know music room. So Gene actually hung out at my friend's house for several hours. And uh, he was there doing the interview. We were just sharing pizza and just sharing funny stories, talking about monster movies and, and all that. It was a huge, huge, huge thrill, a huge thrill. He's telling us about Japanese culture. He's flipping through my tour book. And it's, you know, it's all going to be on film uh, on this new special on Gene Simmons. That's going to be airing on NHK uh, sometime in 2020. So it was cool. It was like it was so surreal, you know seeing Gene spit blood on stage or seeing Gene spit blood in the greatest show on earth and then seeing him just sitting at the table and we're just, we're just talking about, um, you know, we're talking about X-Men films or he's like, uh, have you seen the new, uh, the new, um, I, I can't, what's the, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, the, the Maleficent, the Maleficent sequel. It's talking about that, talking about the Avengers and it's just, you know, saying that his wings came from Black Bolt from the Inhumans and just that he knew that it was the Inhumans was, was so cool. So, um, but we, the day ended, um, on a really, really special and a really, really sentimental note. Um, you know, Paul and, and John's mother, she's still alive, but, um, you know, she's, she's in her nineties, so she can't get around like she, like she usually could. And uh, she lives next door. So Gene made a, uh, an appearance to her next door. So he walked over, sat with her on the couch, held her hand and just, which just he was a human, which not that he ever wasn't a human, but to see that part of him was just was incredible absolutely absolutely incredible so uh there, you know there, there's it, a side to gene that a lot and to all the guys in the band that they don't a lot of people don't get to see you may see a photograph of them meeting with veterans or someone in a mm -hmm. hospital or someone's mother like that but you really for most of us the image of the members of kiss is their guys on stage or maybe uh yeah. you know a starbucks paul you know or something like that not the real human side where they are there is no mask they're just being humans one to one with someone else it it was incredible to see that and and i tell you all throughout the day any fans that came up any people that want to say hello take a picture get a fist bump he accommodated every single one of them so it was it it was it was great you know to see that and i also got to spend a little time with uh with our cat boy eric singer and uh, it, it was great to spend time with him i mean we were Whenever we do these events backstage, we're, we're always we always have one of the rooms to ourselves, and people can come in and out of them. And uh, I just remember I was just milling around in the hallway, and Eric came out of the room, you know, walked like 20, 30 feet to come say hello to me, and we were just talking, kind of like how you and I are talking. And then after the show, you know, after the show, we we walk backstage to kind of exit backstage where where our car and everything was parked. And I'm walking back. And as I'm walking, you know, to get to the backstage area, Eric is just there with a towel in his makeup. And he's just like, just talking I'm like, hey, did you see that kid got the drumstick or did you see this or this was cool? And how about that? And, and this guy looks like that. And just it, it was so cool. It was so cool. So I, I'm, I'm certain that Eric probably doesn't watch Kiss podcasts. But, um, you know, if he does, I just want to thank him again for everything that he does. He's such he's such a cool guy. And he's he's really, really cool to the fans and he's really, really cool to people that, that are around him. You know, I've been lucky enough to, to be around him for over 15 years now. And I never have a bad thing to say about him. You know, he likes to pick on me now and then, which is fine. He does um, that. Yeah, he's having fun. I mean, like he did with me in L.A. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. just sitting there talking to Bruce, and he just comes up and joins the conversation. And mm -hmm. then, obviously, you know, hey, you know, Julian from Kissy Leaks comes up on, you know, when they hit the <laughs> stage. I mean, he's Kissy got a great Leaks. sense of humor, but he's also very, very intelligent and knowledgeable Extremely about a whole bunch of diverse topics. When I interviewed him for the Aerosmith book recently, um, the stuff that we got into tangent wise, which is really cool and fascinating. I mean, talking about Queen and, you know, his knowledge of so many different aspects. Obviously, he worked mm -hmm. with Brian May. So, yeah, uh, yeah. He, just what he knows about music, pop culture, culture, and everything, you know, he's really funny as well. Very entertaining, great guy. Just really cool guy to have a chat with. If you're ever lucky enough to have that opportunity, you'll enjoy it, I'm sure.
I'm wearing a Gene Simmons money bag hoodie. And he saw it and uh, he was like, yeah, take that off and give that to me. And I was like, Eric, it's really cold outside. But then at the same time, I was like, but if you really want it, you can have it, I guess. I mean, we're <laughs> so, um, but uh, it, it was just, it, it was really, really cool. And I hope I get the opportunity to kind of see him again and, and hang out with him a little bit again, because it's always a great time. It's always a great time. I'll tell you a funny story. The last show of the 2009 tour, uh, I was back there with a couple of friends of mine and, uh, you know, Eric is there and, and just nonchalantly goes, you guys want to take a ride up? And we're like, what, what do you mean? He brought us up on the drum riser and let it ascend and let it go up. So it was very, very cool. And I'm sure that not a lot of people got to do that, but I got to do it. And it's something that I won't ever forget. I won't ever forget. And he, he did that. He's actually made a lot of things happen and, and done a lot of cool things for me personally. So, uh, you know, listen, hats off to the guy. He's a, he's a great guy. And, and, and again, hats off again to Gene Simmons. You know, anytime we see somebody trashing Gene or, or, or saying bad stuff about Gene, you know, they really got to they really got to shut up and, and, and you know, educate themselves a little better and understand that this is a this is a great guy who, yeah, he jokes around, and says, oh, I'm not familiar with the term friend or blah, 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 this and that. But this this guy is a sensitive guy and he's a, he's a people person and he likes he likes pleasing people. You know, and, and if he's in a great mood, it, it's all the better. It, it's all the fun because if this guy wasn't in a great mood or wasn't having fun, he wouldn't be on a little motor scooter riding around a supermarket. If someone would have told me, hey, man, next week you're going to be in Topps Market with Gene and he's going to be riding a little scooter around, I would have said, no, he's not. Gene will never do that. But he just got on one and it was it was super funny. Super, and, super. And the funny. video of you on Facebook, uh, you know, the, someone did stream some video of Gene driving around, and there you are following him, and then yeah. Doc's behind you with a whole gaggle of other folk, I guess, yeah. uh, from the Money Bags uh, yeah, yeah. team and the NH the NHK squad. Um, yeah. So entertaining to see, so fun to see kind of an impromptu side of the demon, because you often see these things when they're put together and the end product. You don't get to see kind of the peek behind Wizard of Oz curtain to yeah. see what's going on and how these things become reality. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like, like I said, it, it was it, it was cool. And, and what the other the other cool part about it is. Gene was down there in my friend's kiss room. He was kind of pointing out things going, oh, this is from that and this is from then. And he knew all the merchandise and he knew everything. And it was it was cool to to watch him look at that kiss stuff and and get these fond memories from it. Um, we the night before we had listened to that uh, record store day Fraley's Comet release and he had left it on the turntable. So like while Gene was distracted, I took the record off the turntable and I put it underneath a slip mat so we wouldn't see the record that we were listening to the night before. <laughs> Not that he would have cared or he would have even noticed it, but uh, that's just one of those things that you didn't want to um, that you didn't want him to see or, or, or comment on. Uh, but but listen, you know, in 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 short about the actual Kiss show, um, if you're still on the fence about going or not going to this tour, you man, you got to go. This is going to be it. There, there's going to be a time where you're going to not be able to go and see a Kiss show. So go and have fun. I mean, people can say what they want about if they lip sync or if they're not playing what they want, if they're not doing this. I mean, it's one of those things that once it's gone, you're going to miss it. You really are. And you're not going to realize that until it's too late. And again, you know, it's about congregating with fellow fans. I mean, the people yeah. that you see, the people that you bump into, the new people that you meet, the kids yeah. who maybe – you know, when you're up in those rows, you can do a solid to someone and give a pick. I mean, I managed to get rid of all the extra picks. I, you know, obviously, I did the uh, the Tommy Thayer Explorer guitar mm -hmm. um, thing in in Sacramento, and the the guitar case was full full of picks. I've still got all the ones that are stuck to the guitar uh, from you know the performance, but every single one from. Uh, you know that have been included i was just walking around other shows just if there's a kid in makeup here have a pick you know since you did a guitar experience let me ask you something you did it after the show correct correct yes and then you got to basically tell tommy you had to like stick your hand up in him and tell him exactly where to sign it right um, like where to where to sign the guitar is what i mean where to sign what to sign how okay, to okay. sign um, all right 
Yeah. So I, I, um, the guys that I was with there, we're all kind of, we're all pretty big Motley Crue fans and you know, there, some of us are more excited than the others about the, the new tour. So we were just looking and you could buy a Nikki six stage played bass. You know, it's 5,000 bucks. So you, you buy the ticket, then you get the stage played bass for five grand, get to meet Nikki and, and blah, blah, blah. But what you don't read in the fine print is they say that Nikki will only sign the back of the bass. Yeah, exactly. He's only sign the back of the bass. So, we were saying, listen, if we ever do this, Nikki's got to sign, um, you know, to whomever, this is a crock of shit that I'm signing in the back of the base, Nikki Six. <laughs> and that would be the only way you can display the back of the base is oh, if he wrote that. That's horrible. I mean, every time I've done Paul Stanley guitar experience, he'll sign obviously whatever you want on the front, wherever you want, you know, even if you're a desk chicken. He'll sign exactly <laughs> how you want it. Um, and even if you've got 124 of the 125 permitted characters, I think they've reduced that since I did mine. Um, he'll sign, sit there focusing very carefully on writing exactly what you want and sign it. Tommy's like, what do you want me to write? Where do you want me to write it? Okay, how about there? You know, what color? Oh, I think blue will work better. You know, so the Kiss has been fantastic in signing anything uh, when it comes to musical instruments and actually providing that customer servicing. That's one thing I'll always give them props for doing. Yes. Very, yes. very, very professional organization. Make the customer happy. You know, you want it signed this way? I'll sign it that way. And I'm sure if someone said sign it on the back, Gene would probably look at you kind of like your village idiot, but say, sure, you're the customer, whatever you want, not make that in the fine print. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, um, I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things where you wonder why. And the only thing I could think about is maybe he's signing it before the show and doesn't want to show during the actual performance. But then again, if he's doing that before the show and playing it on stage, it's going to get all messed up. The signature is going to get smeared. He's going to be rubbing it against himself. It's going to be all sweaty. So, you know, I'll be anxious to see what comes of that once the tour actually starts because the tour doesn't start till July. And here we are in Jan in February now. Is, so, uh, um, is Doc still involved in crew? I don't think he's been involved in crew since the late 80s. Okay, well, shows how much I pay attention to who their management is. Um but, you know, Nikki should probably reach out to Gene and find out, you know, the best way to make these things work. Kiss's fine-tuned machine on meet and greets. Obviously, they were one of the first adopters of that, if not the first mm -hmm. uh, hard rock band to start doing that. I think that may have been one of the things Mike brought into the picture way back in 2003. 2003, yeah. Um, and, and I tell you, I did the Platinum Experience in 2004, and that's still the best thing I've ever done. 2003, best ever uh, mm -hmm. kind of meet and greet with the band other than doing stuff like the vault um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and some of the other uh, you know very special events but in terms of all the meet and greets I've done I think I've done four 2003 by far I've done 12. was fantastic 2004 was fantastic and then I didn't mm -hmm. do one again until I think 2017 which really was not that much fun what was so cool about it, and, and, and it's funny that I can say this now, way back when, way back in my day, but way back in 2003, 2004, because I'm assuming that the, the packages and, and what you got was, uh, was the same. What was great about that in 2004 is you went to Kiss Online to purchase your package, and your package included a ticket. So you didn't know where your ticket was until you got you know, the night of the show, and you were always in the first row or two if you bought the Platinum Experience, which is what I did back in 2004. And um, everything was included. So it was a thousand bucks. You got to meet the band and you get a merchandise package. You got a signed tour book, which I kick in myself for selling that signed tour book. I should have kept it. But um, what was what was really cool about it is um, you get you did the picture first. And there was like a lot of there was I would say between 50 and 100 people taking the picture with the band. But after that, they cleared the room out and there was just a maximum of 20 platinum ticket holders that got to just meet the band and hang out with the band for like 30 to 40 minutes which yeah, is insane you, you were back there it. for quite a while the one i did in concord we also had a photo taken of the whole group on stage oh yeah i had that too in 2000 yep. i forgot about that I which forgot we didn't about have that. in 2003 and uh, again mike was taking some other photos in the 2003 one he took some photos of us having our photos taken which is really oh, cool to that have, is cool have that thing they had a tent and then you were hanging out with um you know uh tommy peter gene and paul had to 
get that in the right order. Um, and then in 2004, obviously, Tommy and Eric, uh, Gene and Paul. And, you know, it was really mingling, which I loved because, yeah, there were some people who managed to kind of dominate time with them. But the band were also very aware of that and would move on to someone and really circulate around the room. So it, it was really more of what a meet and greet kind of is defined rather than what it became with the acoustic performance and then line up and we'll sign your stuff. Now get out. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, much less assembly line. Obviously, I understand that the numbers did increase as it became. Well, there was popular. no limit. There was no limits. I think starting in maybe 2010 or 2012, there was no limit to how many they were going to get in there. Yeah, so I I'm, I'm totally agree with you. If you missed it in 2003, 2004, those are really the good old days of the meet and greets. And I'm just really 100%. thankful that I got to do one on each of those tours. There's still photos. You know, I had Peter sign uh, the one from 2003. Uh, his is the only autograph I'll ever have on that photo, just because it, it's, it's really special from the conversation that I had. I had like a 10 minute chat with Peter. Um, during he's, that the sweetest, he's the sweetest guy. That was when I, I really became like Team Green, uh, just the <laughs> whole interaction with him and the stuff he was talking about back then, because it went, it flew in the face of everything anyone kind of knows about Peter, and it was just so damn cool. I wish I'd had a tape recorder running because, you know, my memory, it's, be, it's, it's like a fish. It's becoming bigger with the retelling each time, but it really was cool. So I'm, I've always been, and in the most recent years, it's definitely grown quite a bit. I'm team Gene. I, I'm, I've, I'm team Gene, you know, just every time I've got to hang out with that guy, it's been so cool. I remember in 2006 and I probably told this story so many times before 2006 did the whole Japanese tour with them got to stay in the same hotels and I was just, you know, able to follow them around and caught the guitar, caught the blood cup, all that good stuff. But what was the coolest is I think it was the second day of the tour. I was sitting down eating breakfast and Gene came down and he joined, you know, our group when he just was sitting and just chatting with us. And after breakfast was over, there was no autograph. So I go, Hey Gene, I was wondering if maybe we could take a picture. And he goes, sure. And the picture of me and him together, you can tell it's a genuine smile on that guy's face. When it was just, he's got a cup of coffee and we're just sitting, it's just him and I, and it was a great, great, great picture and, and a great memory. I've shared it on Facebook a bunch of times and it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, man, this is a, it was something so, so, so cool that I was able to do. Yep. And, uh, and I'll never, I'll never forget it. I've been very, I've been extremely blessed with all the times I've been able to get close to the band and talk to the band and, and, and do this. So I, I never forget that. And when this is all over. I'll look back at it very, very fondly. Um, I, I'm working on the next little project that I'm working on. It's called One Last Time. It's taking a little bit longer than anticipated because I want to get it just right. It's not just the Kiss story. It's my story. So it's something that's it's it's personal. And what I'm hoping comes out of it, it's not just me tooting my own horn saying, hey, look at all the times I've met Kiss. Look at all the cool stuff I've done. It's not. It's saying this stuff happened and it means so much to me. What stuff happened to you that meant so much to you? It's these are my experiences and I hold them very near to my heart and I hope people watch it and remember those same type of experiences that they hold near and dear to them. You know, I lost my mother at a very young age, but she took me to, to my very first Kiss concert. And uh, every time I listen to the band or every time I go see the band or every time I'm there with, with the guys, it, it reminds me of that. It reminds me that she was pushing me to – you know, well, hey, is this kiss thing? Is it something you like? And I was like, yeah. It's like, well, if you if you really like this and you want to spend a thousand dollars on a kiss ticket, go and go and do it. And that's what I did in two thousand four. So you know, it's just it's remembering those things and just and remembering you know, um, you know those those parts of your life. So it's 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 awesome. It's it's awesome. So so for me, that's that's what it means to me. And um, and yeah. So I, I can ramble on forever. So, uh, but anyway, where I was getting with that is, uh, it, it was I was supposed to have it done in February, but obviously I'm adding stuff and doing some more stuff. But uh, I would say probably by uh, early spring you will see one last time, and it will be my final Kiss, you know, film production, fan film, whatever it is. So, one last time is is the journey to the end of the road, and it's also the last Kiss thing I'll do, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's impossible not to be touched by the poignancy of your, 
your message there. I mean, obviously, you have a, a very deep thing with your mom taking you to yeah. your first show and, yeah. you know, and then losing her. But I think regardless of anyone's personal history, you know, whether you've ever met anyone in the band, whether you've only gotten close or maybe it's just getting a ticket, finally getting a ticket to a concert or maybe finding a piece of vinyl or a collectible or something. It's amazing the different and disparate sorts of things that will mean a lot to different people. You know, my whole wall behind this banner is just photos of me with members of Kiss and Mark Slaughter. Um, you know, just I love that guy. Yeah, you know, he, he's up there, you know, because again, it means it's me with friends at events. It's me, it, it's my kiss story behind me. And those are the only things I'm keeping. I'm selling off all my vinyl, all my stuff, all my junk. You know, I don't want it to end up in goodwill. You well, know, if you got for, any tour books, let me know. Don't sell those before you talk to me. I'm the tour book guy. I don't, I got rid of all mine. I had just about every one that there was, you know, including variants at one point. Now I've only got one left and that's the version one from the, uh, obviously this tour, because I was at the show. I think I was the second person to actually buy one of these mm. uh, in, in line because we were mm. doing the, uh, the platinum event that night. So, you know, there, there wasn't too many sold before I picked up the four I picked up that night. And then I just had already uh, gotten the other ones for friends. So they're all mm -hmm. distributed. So, you know, I that stuff just it's the memories now, which is what it's all about. And again, that's why I'm going on the cruise, because of the people and the mm -hmm. memories. It's not so much that it's the kiss cruise. It's that there are so many people who I've come across online or in person over the decades are going to be on that, many of whom I'll be meeting for the first time. So it's the memories that I'm collecting now, not, yeah. you know, fighting $2,500 for that Japanese best of kiss cassette or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, which I, I would more than willingly did for years. But then I, I was always one of those people was, well, now I've got it. What the hell do I do with it? Uh, for sale um you know it, it was it, the hunt and the kill the catch not I, the I, actual carcass i definitely i definitely get that i mean i definitely collect a lot of the the crap merchandise and that doesn't just mean it's spencer stuff i just collected the merchandise for long but you as you grow you figure out what you like and what brings you joy i mean i love spreading all my tour books out on my bedroom floor and looking through them and and finding different things that i didn't know that that was there i mean the tour books are my absolute favorite thing and um you know, I don't really collect any of the, the those festival tour books. I have a couple of Kiss pages in them. I only collect actual Kiss tour books. And as of this present recording, I'm only missing the double platinum version of the Alive 2 tour book. Although my 20-page version of the Alive 2 tour book, there is some water damage on the back. So uh, if you have a copy, let me know. I'd love to buy it off of you. Um, but I'm missing the um, Lick It Up UK 84 tour book. I don't have that one. So if anybody's got that one, you know, send me, send Julian a PM or, or, or send me a PM or just get, get in touch with one of us. I would love to make I'll, sure I'll make it, the order form. I'll make it worth it. Even if it's without the order form at this point, it's one of the ones I'm missing at this point. I think Lonnie actually, because when I purged my first kiss collection, I think Lonnie bought that. So maybe I gotta go beat him up and take it back. Not sure. Challenge him to a race or something, but, um, but, you know, and listen, you know, I know you're going on the cruise. I can, I hope you come to rock and pod because how many more times are, are all of us knuckleheads going to be able to get together? I'm out this year. I'm not doing rock and pod. You're had, coming. Had, had there been an indie expo, I wouldn't be doing that because of going on the cruise. My son's going to university. So, you know, we had to make some cuts here and there. And, uh, you know, I was still in for rock and pod until I, had that moment of insanity and book the booking window is available. Okay, here's my credit card. Um, I, I think you'll change your mind. There's going to be some cool things coming to, to Rock and Pod. So Chris has, has told me some cool things that he's been talking about and wanting to do. So I hope you change your mind on that. I hope you're able to, to come out tonight because I think it'll be a lot of fun uh, when you do do that. It'll be my first one. So um, I, I'm excited to, to go and just hang out with all those guys there. But uh, but again, these are these are fleeting moments. So don't sit on this. Go to the end of the road show. Don't don't think about what the band is or isn't doing or or oh my god, t-shirts are fifty bucks. Well, I, I got news for you, buddy. Everyone is selling t-shirts for fifty bucks. It's not just Kiss. Yeah. It's just it's it's how it's become. If you don't like the fifty dollar t-shirt, go and buy the program's only forty bucks. Or go and buy a poster. It's thirty bucks. 
and you know th there's stuff cheaper than that as well if you really need is. to if you need to purchase something there you know there are options because they're covering just about every economic um availability you know er Whatever, whatever you've got in their wallet, they're more than help, you know, more than to happy to take it from you, to take <laughs> it from you. Um, yeah. But I, I go through life like Ace's title of his book, No Regrets. Life is too short. You don't know what's coming down the pipe. You know, live and enjoy the moments that you have an opportunity to. And, you know, mm. you know, forget it. If that does mean not going to a kiss show because you're just out. Fine. That's cool. Enjoy the memories that you do have. But there's no there's no reason to to drag other people down in, into any misery that you may or may not have because I see that more often now than I have in the past. Oh God! Where, someone posts something. You know, they had a great time doing this. They they even say, "Please keep this nice. This is a positive only thread." And there I am having to delete someone. I just can't help but say, no. You can just help but say, "Shut, you can. shut the fuck keep up." Keep scrolling. You know, it's like. It was delete or ban, delete or ban. Oh, just delete. Yeah. It's just like, come on, don't rain, feel the need to rain on everyone's parade, reiterating or regurgitating yet again why you're not going or you're disinvested in something that once meant a lot to you. Go and spin that copy of Alive or whatever does make you happy yeah. and let the person enjoy the memories and share it with like-minded people. You don't have to comment on every freaking thread that someone's saying something positive that you don't agree with. You know, that, that's everything in life. You yeah, don't I, have to comment. And if you do, just make it funny. Make it funny. Correct a spelling error or just make it funny. If you can, <laughs> you know, just keep it. I mean, listen, I, I'm on Facebook for several reasons. To be funny, to look at pictures of boobs, talk about kiss, and that's it. You know, anything else outside of that, I'm out. I'm out. Swipe left. Politics. Keep scrolling. Yeah, exactly. Keep scrolling. exactly. Oh, keep scrolling. Forget exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, exactly. So, uh, so listen. I really appreciate you giving me the, the time to share my review. Talk a little bit about one last time. I promise it's coming, and I promise it's going to be awesome. It might even be better than other documentaries that are being produced at this time. It will be there before that. We'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that's so a, that's it, a guarantee. It definitely will be out in the spring. It won't slip possibly into the summer. No, no, no. This release date, I mean, see, here's the thing. You know, not taking anybody's money or taking anybody's time or doing anything up front. This is, this is going to happen. So it's uh, now that I've gone to the show again, I've gotten invigorated again, and uh, and, and I'm going to do it. You know, it's funny because – I, uh, I, I, I've been taking a, some breaks from, you know, doing things and editing and just sitting at the computer all the time because when I look back at the calendar, I'm like, man, I have been working on something nonstop since I had the idea for The Greatest Show on Earth back in 2017. I've been – first it was getting all the best footage I could for it and then it was piecing it together and then it was like, okay, well, now it's done. Well, let's do something different. Let's do Kiss at Midnight or, oh, that's done. Let's – let's go back and spit shine the greater show enough because I can make it better now. And then it was like, Oh, wait a minute, let's do a multicam edit or, or wait a minute. Let's, let's go back and just fix this Japanese show and sync it to the loss of life too. It's always been something. So again, anyone that's taken any time to watch any of those projects that I've done, thank you so, so, so much. There's a, a, a tons of views, but it's also funny to me that there are people that don't even know about them. And then I'll, I'll see a post and I'll say, hey, check this out. Everyone's like, what is that? Then they watch and they're like, oh, my God, why didn't I see this sooner? So um, I'm very, very appreciative to anyone that has stopped scrolling and watched something of mine or looked at something of mine. But uh, in my opinion, the best is yet to come because the best story is your story. It really is. It really, 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 really is. And uh, all the great artists tell their 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 story. You know, George Lucas' story was the story of a farm boy in Star Wars because that's how he felt trying to get into the film industry back in the early 70s. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, he didn't carry around lightsabers or robots or anything, but that was his story. So, one last time is my story, and it, it will be one last time. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, so uh, this is it. Hopefully, this isn't the last you hear of me, and hopefully, I'll be back on the FAQ. It's funny, I, I try to check when to jump on these, and I always seem to be like one day late. When all the spots are filled, so I gotta, I gotta get better at checking and and uh, and, and coming on because I uh, still love talking kiss. I really pick, do. Pick and choose, do your own thing. We'll all, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, be, we'll be around on this and on the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast. So who yeah. knows what everything holds in the future? All right, who knows?
Who knows? Here's to tomorrow. All right, that's it. That's Andrew's night in Buffalo and the day after. <laughs> and the day after, yeah. So uh, what do you say? We'll see you in the next one. No, no, that's what, that's what the other guys say. But uh, Gene will say, Gene will, my favorite Gene Simmons. Thanks. Thanks for joining us on the Kissing You podcast. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.